All right. This is some bonus content of the book, What Was the Underground Railroad? And this first page is an original copy of a map of underground railroad routes through Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. So notice, we're not familiar with any of these towns, but it has paths that they would take to go north. This is a real picture of Ohio abolitionists John and Jane Rankin. Remember, John Rankin was the guy who um, put his lantern up on the pole so people could cross the Ohio River. At the top, this is a photo of a wood engraving depicting a slave auction in Richmond, Virginia. This is in cursive handwriting, so it's really hard to read and it's old, but it's a receipt from 1840 for a $250 payment for a male slave. So you know how when you go to Walmart and your mom gets that long thing that says all the things she bought, and it sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short, depending on how much you buy? That is a receipt for payment. And that's what this is, only instead of being for things at Walmart, it's for a slave. This is a picture of slave quarters at the Hermitage Plantation outside of Savannah, Georgia. On the left is a poster advertising an anti-slave catchers convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on April 13th, 1854. And on the right, it's an 1851 poster warning African Americans about the fugitive slave law. It says, caution colored people of Boston, one and all, you are hereby respectfully cautioned and advised to avoid conversing with watchmen and police officers of Boston. And it goes on. This is a photograph featuring five generations of a slave family on a plantation in Beaufort, South Carolina. On the left is a 1910 photo of Uncle Billy Marshall, an African-American conductor on the Underground Railroad from Ripley, Ohio. At the top on the right, a portrait, so somebody painted this, of Ellen Craft wearing the disguise she used to escape slavery. Okay, so this is a woman. Does it look like a woman? I can't wait to read that part of the story. This image at the bottom is from 1875 to 1880 of African-American workers amid bales of cotton. So this is the cotton they've picked that day. Okay, this is kind of a big picture. It's a 19th century painting that shows African Americans escaping from slavery. This is a real photograph of Harriet Tubman. I think you're going to grow to appreciate her as we continue reading. On the left is a picture of Sojourner Truth, a former slave and abolitionist leader in 1864. And on the right is Frederick Douglass in 1856. Those are names that you will remember that are related to this time in history. And at the bottom... 
This is a picture of emancipated slaves working for the U.S. Army in Virginia. So these are slaves that were freed. So once they were freed, they were working for the Army. So if you work for the Army, you get paid. On the left is the title page of the first edition of Harriet Beecher Stowe's 1832 anti-slavery novel called Uncle Tom's Cabin. Um, in the middle is an oil portrait, so somebody painted it, from 1855 of William Lord Garrison, founding editor of the abolitionist newspaper, The Liberator. On the right, a lithograph from 1850, so it's a painting, depicting Frederick Douglass and others as they watch Henry Box Brown emerge from a crate. And we're going to read some more about Henry Box Brown, too. I can't wait to share that with you. And then here on the bottom, there's a copy of The Liberator, that newspaper that William Lloyd Garrison was the author and editor of. And it's dated December 21st, 1833. I wish it wasn't so small and we could read some of it. Here on the left is Caroline Quarles Watkins when she lived in Sandwich, Ontario. Now that's in Canada. And we're going to find out about her story later on. And this is Underground Railroad operator George P. Clark. Real people. Who really existed. This is a reward posted in 1847 in St. Louis, Missouri for the capture of five slaves. This is the raising of a lantern on the flagpole in Ripley, Ohio, used to signal fugitive slaves. This is Thomas L. Gray in front of his house in Deavertown, Ohio, which served as a station on the Underground Railroad. This is the McGee House in Canisteo, New York, which was also an Underground Railroad station. This is a wood engraving depicting African Americans in Washington, D.C. on April 19, 1866, celebrating the end of slavery. And finally, this is a photo from 1863 of slaves who found freedom in the North. We'll get back with our book.